Hi guys, my name is Brady Bissett. Welcome and welcome back to the classroom. Before we get started, I need to give a huge thank you to all of you guys out here for 10,000 subscribers. I don't know how it happened, um, but yeah, extremely grateful for that. I appreciate it so much. And here's to, I guess, the next 10,000. Diffusion and lighting go together like like apple cider and autumn, or, or peanut butter and jelly, I guess. The point is, diffusion is super necessary. We learned a few videos back how unflattering hard light can be and how important it is to soften your light, but diffusion methods can definitely come with a cost. Methods like light domes or scrims or other diffusion materials come at cost of one, two, even $600 and beyond. And quite frankly, many of us, myself included, just don't have the money for accessories like that. So as you may have seen in my previous videos, I personally made a super cheap, super portable, easy DIY scrim for under $20, and that's what we're gonna cover today. And yes, you heard that right, $20. So let's dive into arts and crafts time. To start, let's talk about what you're gonna need. I went to Lowe's and I picked out a three quarter inch PVC pipe. I figured that was kind of the perfect thickness for what we're gonna be working with here. So I already have made a larger scrim that you've seen in my previous videos. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna be making a smaller one for you guys, but just adjust the math and dimensions accordingly for the desired size of the scrim that you're gonna be making. So for me, I knew that I wanted to make this scrim two and a half square feet. So I only needed one 10 foot long PVC pipe. Again, if yours is gonna be larger, for the other one that I had made, I got two of the 10 foot things. They're about $2.50 a piece. And then after that, you're gonna need four 90 degree elbows, the, the three quarter inch elbows, and that's gonna connect all your four sides together. For the diffusion material, I personally am using a white bed sheet, but any other fabrics like uh, white muslin or any kind of translucent fabric for that matter will do great. Just make sure that it's thin enough for some light to pass through and not completely block it all. And be sure that the dimensions of your fabric are wide enough and long enough that are gonna fit the actual frame of your scrim. So for the tools, you'll need a saw, a tape measure, uh, scissors, pins to hold the fabric for you to sew it, and then a sewing machine. And if you don't have a sewing machine, um, anything that really holds it down, hot glue, staples, uh, tacky glue, I just decided to sew it to give it the most professional look that I really could. So for the first step of this, you're gonna take your PVC pipe, make the dimensions, so say you want it three feet long, make your three feet cuts, cut all the pipes, and then put them all next to each other and just make sure that they're all exactly the same dimensions. And then now that you've got all four of them cut, and they're even, and you check that, take the elbows, all four of the elbows, and just assemble your frame and make sure that it all works. And now you've kind of got the skeleton of your scrim here. The next step, I took my frame and just put it on top of the bed sheet. One, just to make sure that the sheet was big enough. And two, it makes it a lot easier to kind of outline the frame into the next step. And to make it easier, I just cut all of like the really far outside excess sheet that was just kind of bunched up and made it really complicated to cut. So I cut that all off and just got rid of it. So now I've got a pretty nice outline and we can start to perfect what this is gonna look like. So now that we've got all the excess kind of cut away, we're gonna make the outline of our frame, leaving about three inches outside of kind of that skeleton that we made, giving enough fabric so we can fold it over and sew it and wrap it around that PVC pipe. And less is more here because you can't glue it back together, but you can always cut more off if, if, if there's too much and the fabric is too large still. So the next step, I cut the corners out kind of like little semicircles. And the reason for this, it makes it so you can connect and break down the scrim via those elbows. So now that everything is ready to sew, these next steps are tedious, but really, really important. So I left the frame there on top of the fabric. I took the first side and I folded the fabric over and then I put pins in place just to hold it for when you take apart the scrim. And then the next step would be to take apart the scrim and I took it over and sewed that first side. So once that's sewed, I brought it back over to the scrim and then I reassembled it. So once we got it here for the second side, we're gonna take the parallel side, so the opposite side of that scrim, and we're gonna take that fabric, really pulling it tight and making sure that you've got a lot of tension and the fabric is really uh, being held tight and fitted. And then you fold that over, make sure it's tight still, put the pins in. And then again, we're gonna have to disassemble the scrim. So take it apart, bring it back over to the sewing machine. So now you've got two sides sewed and complete. And it's really, really important to make sure that that fabric is pulled tight because it just works better and looks better and you don't want it to be really like baggy and flowy and floppy. Once the second side is sewed, you're gonna bring it back over, have to reassemble both of those sides now, and then you take the third side, fold that over again, super tight, pin it, take it apart, bring it back over to the sewing machine, sew it once more, bring it back, and then you gotta do the same thing 
for the last side. Now that you've gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, you've got the fourth side sewed. You can go ahead and put it all together and make sure that everything is tight and fitted. And at this point, it should be looking pretty darn nice right now. And that's really it. It's all it is, only a little bit tedious, but you've got yourself some pretty decent diffusion after this, I'd like to say. Now, of course, as with anything, as you invest more money into something like this, the quality does improve. So the scrim that we made here isn't necessarily an exact replacement, but more so a compromise or a cheap alternative for lower budget sets. Now that you've got some nice diffusion, go have fun with it. Go clamp it to stands, chairs, walls, have your friends hold it, clamp it to your friends, whatever you gotta do to get the shot perfect. I hope you enjoyed these arts and crafts that we did today. As always, make sure to like this, share it if it was helpful, subscribe, and please send me all of the creations that you make inspired by any of my videos. I always love to see them. And until next time, consider this arts and crafts class dismissed.